This is for the ethics review class at Parker University. The fourth element of a claim for chiropractic malpractice is damages. The patient needs to prove that they suffered some injury and the compensation that they should receive for that injury. So some of the things that might be included in their damages, of course, if they've incurred reasonable uh, expenses for medical care, either in the past or in the future, that's an element, and that's usually a very easily easy, uh, uh, easily measurable element of damages. The other parts of the damage damages may be more difficult to establish or, or maybe a more subjective dollar value. Uh, physical pain uh, is something the patient can be compensated for. Mental anguish, the anxiety that comes about from being injured, uh, is something that the patient can receive as damages. If the patient suffers a physical impairment, so for example in a stroke case where the patient is no longer able to walk or able to speak, that may be that physical impairment and the value of that physical impairment may be an element of the damages. If the patient has lost their earning capacity, uh, perhaps the patient earned their living through labor uh, and the injury to the caused by the chiropractic malpractice, allegedly the disc injury, uh, it makes it impossible for the patient to continue to work so that they're losing their, their wages. That can be an element of the damages. Of course, if they lose a, a body member or lose hearing or eyesight or mental function, that may be an element of damages. The patient is disfigured. Uh, that may also be an element of damages. And then lastly, that last item should be emotional distress, not mental anguish. The emotional distress that the patient has experienced is an element of damages. And, and the idea here is, I, I think the message that's most important to me is typically when malpractice, when a chiropractor commits malpractice, even if it causes the patient to suffer any injury, the injury is usually so uh, transitory, it's such a short time, and it's such a mild injury that it's simply not enough value there to justify the expense of hiring an attorney and expert witnesses to present the case to get to these elements of damages. Now, it's certainly possible. Uh, there are situations, uh, uh, you know, if the allegation is that the doctor has caused a stroke, those damages may certainly be substantial. If the allegation is the doctor caused a disc injury, that may also be a situation where the damages can be substantial. Or if the doctor has fractured a bone, fractured a rib, for example. Those are not huge damages, but they're certainly a very painful injury, and those damages have some value. Um, other than that, most situations involving chiropractors, uh, performing a bad adjustment is something that may cause pain or a little bit of discomfort for a short time, but it can be pretty readily addressed with uh, uh, the next adjustment. Uh, and there simply are, the damages simply are not that much. It's possible for the damages to be high, but in most situations with chiropractic care, the damages simply aren't there to support a malpractice claim.